The U.S. on Thursday conducted its first flight test of a new land-based ballistic missile. The test was carried out from San Nicolas Island, California. The test of this kind of missile was banned under the INF Treaty and is now possible because the U.S. has withdrawn from it earlier this year. The Pentagon stated the test took place at 8.30 a.m. Pacific Time when a prototype of the missile was fired from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. The missile flew for more than 300 miles or 480 kilometers before landing in the ocean. The Pentagon added, data collected and lessons learned from this test will inform the Department of Defense's development of future intermediate range capabilities. Defense Secretary Mark Esper told reporters after the test, once we develop intermediate range missiles and if my commanders require them, then we'll work closely and consult closely with our allies in Europe. Asia and elsewhere with regards to any possible deployments. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes the U.S. testing of a new ground launch ballistic missile after withdrawing from the INF Treaty. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. If you are, like us, fascinated by military vehicles and technology, I recommend you give War Thunder a try. It's a military vehicle combat game which you can download and play for free on PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One with cross-platform support. It has a huge variety of more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s, which you can take to battle on land, in the air and at sea on more than 80 theaters of war. War Thunder has been kind enough to offer all Defense Updates viewers a special bonus, which will grant you a free premium tank, aircraft or ship and three days of premium account time for registering using our link in the description below. So take the plunge and join more than 20 million players from around the world. The INF Treaty was signed by Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev in 1987. It banned ground launch missiles with ranges from 500 kilometers to 5,500 kilometers. That's 310 to 3,420 miles. The INF Treaty eliminated around 2,700 nuclear and conventional missiles as well as their launchers. This was achieved in May 1991. This included short-range missiles with 310 to 620 miles, that's 500 to 1,000 kilometer range, and intermediate-range missiles with 620 to 3,420 miles, that's 1,000 to 5,500 kilometer range. The treaty had provisions for 10 years of on-site inspections. INF Treaty went a long way in ending the serious standoff between U.S. Pershing and cruise missiles and Soviet SS-20 missiles in Europe. It should be noted that the treaty does not cover sea-launched missiles. There were two main factors that resulted in the U.S. abandoning the treaty, which we will now look into one by one. On November 29, 2017, speaking at the Wilson Center, National Security Council official Christopher Ford had revealed that the weapon violating the INF Treaty was the Novator 9M729, having NATO designation SSC-8. This newly developed missile was reported to be derived from 3M14 caliber NK land-based cruise missile and probably uses some design elements of KH-101 air-launched cruise missile. As per the United States, Novator 9M729 is land-based and has a range between 500 km to 5,500 km, that is 310 to 3,420 miles, depending on fuel load and warhead usage. This makes the missile violate the terms of the INF Treaty. The 9M729 is capable of hitting targets throughout Western Europe with tactical nuclear warheads in the event of a conflict. In December 2017, the U.S. government had sanctioned several companies involved in the production of the 9M729, including lead contractor Novator. In February 2018, the Pentagon concluded that Russia was actively violating the terms of the agreements. In October last year, President Trump claimed the agreement did little more than interfere with U.S. military development. The President has said at a Nevada rally, I don't know why President Barack Obama didn't negotiate or pull out 
We're not going to let them violate a nuclear agreement and go out and do weapons and we're not allowed to. NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg concurred with Trump's assessment. He stated, After years of denials, Russia recently acknowledged the existence of a new missile system, called 9M729. Russia has not provided any credible answers on this new missile. All allies agree that the most plausible assessment would be that Russia is in violation of the treaty. The INF Treaty already had much opposition in America's power circle. This is not only because of the Russian aspect, but also due to the Chinese factor. Harry Harris, the former commander of U.S. Pacific Command, who is now U.S. Ambassador to South Korea, is one of them. In testimony submitted to Congress last year, Harris pointed to several important aspects. He noted that China is not a signatory of any treaty like this and used it to develop a large arsenal of missiles. As per him, the Chinese rocket forces has more than 2,000 ballistic and cruise missiles, almost 95 percent of which would violate the INF Treaty if China were a signatory. The U.S. government's 2018 Nuclear Posture Review NPR, pointed to the fact that Russia is lowering its threshold for using low-yield nuclear weapons in wartime and warned that the U.S. must move to match this capability. The NPR stated, Russia's belief that limited nuclear first use, potentially including low-yield weapons, can provide such an advantage is based, in part, on Moscow's perception that its greater number and variety of non-strategic nuclear systems provide a coercive advantage in crises and at lower levels of conflict. This is where the new American weapon will come in. With this new weapon, the U.S. will have a way to strike Russia from Europe, just like Russia has the ability to hit Europe from its homeland. This will mean both sides will be back on the same situation which had led to the INF Treaty in the first place. And it will actually be worse as they now can easily deploy tactical nukes that have lower usage threshold. Since the distance between Russia and Western Europe is very small, both parties will have very little time to react in case a missile launch is triggered. This is bound to complicate the security situation. Viewers may note that this is the second such test. Earlier, the U.S. had tested a ground launch cruise missile, which also violated the terms of the INF Treaty. The test drew a strong reaction from Russia. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov told reporters on Friday, We've said more than once that the United States has been making preparations for violating the INF Treaty. This clearly confirms that the treaty was ruined at the initiative of the United States. Asked whether Russia had any information on the kind of missile tested or its capabilities, he replied, I'm not in the position to make any comments from the technical standpoint on the missile's parameters and characteristics. It's to be noted that Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov had traveled to Washington recently and met Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and President Donald Trump. Lavrov had stated that Russia had directed the attention of our partners at the negative consequences of the U.S. stepping out of the INF Treaty. He also declared a unilateral moratorium on deploying prohibited missiles provided American forces also do not deploy their own systems. It's clear that with the end of the INF Treaty, the probability of a conflict, including a nuclear one, has increased significantly. The Russian reaction indicates that it's now concerned about the rapid progress of the U.S. in testing and possible deployment of this kind of missile. Viewers may note that President Vladimir Putin had earlier called on the U.S. to resume nuclear talks so that the strategic stability could be safeguarded. Putin said in a Kremlin statement on August 5th, the demise of the INF has created fundamental risks for everyone. President Trump had stated that his administration had been discussing with Russia about a pact for nuclear weapons so that they get rid of some, we get rid of some. He also added, we'd certainly have to include China at some point. It remains to be seen if a new treaty comes into place.
Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.